हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी डिस्कस अबाउट यूनिफॉर्म सर्कुलर मोशन हियर अवर क्वेश्चन इज डिफाइन यूनिफॉर्म सर्कुलर मोशन एंड शो दैट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ एक्सेलरेशन इज टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर ऑफ द सर्कल एंड ऑप्टेन सेंट्रीविटल एक्सेलरेशन दैट इज ए सी इज इक्वल टू वी स्क्वेयर बाय आर सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट डू यू मीन बाय यूनिफॉर्म सर्क्युलर मोशन सर्क्युलर मोशन दैट मीन्स मोशन ऑन अ सर्क्युलर पाथ एंड यूनिफॉर्म दैट मीन्स कॉन्स्टंट स्पीड so circular motion that means motion on a circular path with constant speed is called uniform circular motion again i repeat circular motion that means motion on a circular path uniform that means constant speed so motion on a circular path with constant speed is called uniform circular motion for example the motion of electron around its nucleus that is the example of uniform circular motion second one that is motion of artificial satellite around the earth is an example of uniform circular motion before derive the equation for centripetal acceleration we remember following important points first point is velocity of the particle in circular motion will always in the direction of tangent to the path of motion that means if object moving on a circular path and if we want to find the direction of velocity at that point then we draw one tangent at that point so this tangent shows the direction of velocity so first point is velocity of the particle in a circular motion will always in the direction of tangent to the path of motion second one that is velocity velocity that is a vector quantity vector quantity that means it has magnitude and direction both so if magnitude is change if magnitude is change there is a tangential component of acceleration tangential component of acceleration is nothing but the measure of rate of change of magnitude of velocity rate of change of magnitude of velocity that means speed if the speed of the particle is constant then tangential acceleration is zero tangential acceleration is zero because here tangential acceleration that means rate of change of magnitude of velocity magnitude of velocity that means speed that means tangential component of acceleration that is dv by dt here v that is the speed because here we consider only magnitude and if the speed is constant then tangential component is zero because constant derivative that is zero so tangential component of acceleration that is zero is speed is constant in our case there is a uniform circular motion so uniform circular motion that means constant speed so in uniform circular motion tangential component of acceleration is zero again i repeat tangential component of acceleration that is nothing but the measure of rate of change of magnitude of velocity only here we consider magnitude magnitude of velocity that means speed and if the speed is constant then tangential component is zero so in uniform circular motion tangential component of acceleration is zero here it is not affected by the change in direction of velocity tangential component of acceleration that is not affected by the change in direction of the velocity so second thing is direction if direction is change there is a centripetal acceleration or you can say that normal component of acceleration so normal component of acceleration is nothing but the measure of rate of change of direction rate of change of direction to the path of motion of a particle and is always towards the center of curvature hence it is named as centripetal acceleration when the path is straight and not curved then normal comp component of acceleration that is absent that means zero it is not affected by the change in magnitude of the velocity so centripetal acceleration that means that is related to rate of change of direction rate of change of direction if direction is continuously changing then there is always centripetal acceleration and that's direction is always towards the center of curvature so in our case uniform circular motion tangential component of acceleration that is zero and there is only normal component of acceleration that's called centripetal acceleration and its direction is always towards the center of acceleration because in uniform circular motion only velocity direction that is changing so these points we remember 
first point velocity of the particle in circular motion will be always in the direction of tangent and so here in first step we consider an object performing uniform circular motion with constant speed here we consider one object performing uniform circular motion with a constant speed so here we consider one object at point p let r be the position vector and v that is the velocity of the object velocity of the object is always in the direction of tangent to the path of motion here object is performing uniform circular motion let r be the position vector and v be the velocity of the object at point p at time t p be the initial position here object performing uniform circular motion that means here p dash that is the final position so r dash that is the position vector and v dash that is the velocity vector at time t plus delta t so here position vector is rotated by an angle delta theta in time delta t again i repeat here object is performing uniform circular motion let p that is the initial position of the object so r r that is the position vector v that is the velocity of the object at point p at time t p be the initial position and let p dash that is the final position so r dash that is the position vector of p dash v dash that is the velocity vector of p dash at time t plus delta t so here position so here position vector is rotated here position vector is rotated by an angle delta theta in time delta t that is the delta theta that is the angular distance if we connect if we connect initial position and final position so that is the displacement vector delta r if we connect initial position and final position we get that is the displacement vector delta r of the object so here delta r value that we can find by the help of triangle law of vector addition if two vectors acting simultaneously on a body if two vectors acting simultaneously on a body are represented both in magnitude and direction by two sides of triangle taken in order then the resultant then the resultant both magnitude and direction of this vector is given by the third sides of that triangle taken in opposite order so here r dash that is the resultant so r dash is equal to r plus delta r so delta r that is the r dash minus r so final position vector minus initial position vector now we draw velocity diagram so here from this point that is velocity is v so here we draw velocity that is v here from this point velocity is v dash both magnitude are same that means both are in equal length so here if we connect initial velocity and final velocity if we connect initial velocity and final velocity then we get de delta v here angle between v and v dash that is remain same that is delta theta why because we know that tangent is perpendicular to radius r so angle between v and r that is 90 degree so here also tangent is perpendicular to radius r so angle between v dash and r dash that is also 90 degree so here we simply assume that r and r dash vector rotated by 90 degree so angle between v and v dash that is remain same that is delta theta here delta v that is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity that is also we can find by triangle law so if two vectors acting simultaneously on a body that are represented both in magnitude and direction by two sides of triangle taken in order then the resultant both in magnitude and direction of these vectors is given by third sides of the triangle taken in opposite order so here v dash is equal to v plus delta v so delta v is equal to v dash minus v here we give triangle name that is o p p dash 
and second triangle name that is given A, B, C. So clearly the triangle O, P, P dash and triangle A, B, C are similar because here you see that R and R dash equal in length because both are radius of the circle. So angle opposite to equal sides of a triangle are equal. So for example, this angle theta and this angle is also theta. Similarly, in velocity diagram, V and V dash that are equal in length because magnitude is same. So length of this V and V dash that are also in equal. So again, angle opposite to equal sides of a triangle are also equal. So if this angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. So according to angle, angle, angle congruency, triangle O, P, P dash and triangle A, B, C are similar. So here we can write triangle O, P, P dash and triangle A, B, C are similar. So corresponding side ratios are also equal. So here we can write delta V by V is equal to delta R by R. So here triangle O P P dash and triangle A B C are similar. So corresponding side ratio are also equal. So we can write delta V by V is equal to delta R by R. So delta V is equal to V delta R divided by R divide both side by delta t so delta v by delta t is equal to v delta r divided by r into delta t we know that that is the rate of change of velocity that is called acceleration so here acceleration that is a is equal to delta r by delta t that is the rate of change of displacement that is called velocity so v by r as it is and rate of change of displacement that is also velocity so into v so here acceleration a is equal to v square by r and in circular motion there is only one acceleration that is normal acceleration or you can say that centripetal acceleration so here ac is equal to v square by r because tangential component is zero because speed is constant and we know that relation between linear velocity and angular velocity that is v is equal to r omega so here we can write ac is equal to instead of v we can write r omega so r square omega square because here v square so here r square omega square divided by r as it is so r omega square So here magnitude of centripetal acceleration is constant as V and R are constant but direction goes on changing at every point and so it is not constant vector. Direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards the center. Here we can see that direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards its center. Thank you.